In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Wago's Speedway uh, remote I.O. system uh, as an Ethernet IP slave. Um, for the Ethernet IP master, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi running uh, Codasys um, control runtime for Raspberry Pi. Um, if you're not familiar with Speedway, uh, Speedway is an IP67 rated uh, enclosureless I.O. system. It works a lot like the Wago 750 series. You have a field bus coupler. Um, which uh, Speedway supports many different protocols. This one happens to be Ethernet IP. Um, and then you can uh, cable on uh, I.O. modules to this. So um, we've got a four-channel analog input. Um, we'll also be doing some digital output. The benefit to this system, uh, besides it being enclosureless, it's very high performance. So the um, yellow cable here represents the back plane, uh, which is capable of uh, microsecond scan time. So um, you know, beyond being easy to use, it's very, very high performance uh, when it comes to communicating from module to module. So uh, let's plug it in and get it set up. So the structure of the system is very simple. We've got a field bus coupler and two I.O. modules. They're cabled with the yellow cables for the back plane and the gray cables for power. The first step is to set up the Speedway with the FTT frame software. Uh, we'll open the software and we'll just run through the communications um, uh, with the uh, COM4 port using the USB cable. Once we made contact, it downloads the, um, the configuration. We'll go to view and we'll move to expert mode. So this opens up our bus uh, and our hardware system. We can scroll through these menus and you can see all the different um, parameters that you can set. The main one being IP address and the ports for Ethernet IP. So we'll set a static IP here. We can navigate to that IP address now. Um, through a, a web browser and finish our configuration there if we please. Uh, under port you can set Ethernet IP uh, and disable Modbus in this case. Now we're going to go to the hardware menu. We're going to right click on Speedway and click Add. We're going to select our 767-6401 module and our 767-4802 which is our digital output module. Once we've done that, we can go to the uh, modules and set the configuration. The analog input is a free configurable module, meaning it can support both voltage and current inputs. We'll set ours 0 to 10. And we'll set really no scaling. We're just going to do a raw value of 0 to 32767, which is the upper bound of a word value. We could scale it um, in this next menu if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it as is. We'll apply this and then we can download it to the um, to the Speedway system. We'll also download the just the standard configuration of the digital output module to the uh, Speedway as well. So now these values are uh, loaded into the modules and we can exit out of here. Next we're going to go into Codasys. We're going to start a new project. We're going to call this Speedway Ethernet IP. For this, we'll select the codices for Raspberry Pi target. Double click on device, we'll scan the network for a device and select our Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> now we can go add a device um, and we're going to add an Ethernet IP uh, Ethernet port. Um, we're going to add an Ethernet IP scanner. And then by selecting scanner, we can add a generic Ethernet IP device. Uh, there are EDS files, but this is really a, a easier way to do it. We'll double click Ethernet, we'll add our port, and then we'll go to the generic device. And here we're going to set our IP address of our slave, which we set as .0.123. And we'll go to connections, and we're going to add a connection here. Now we're going to enable um, all input, output, and the configuration assembly. We'll set the configuration assembly instance to 1, the uh, output to 65, and the input to 6p. We're going to set the uh, output process image size at 1 and the input size at 9. These are um, byte counts. And uh, output will be point to point, input will be multicast. After we've done this, now we can go to assemblies, and this is a nice trick. We can change the assembly um, showing from a byte to our actual analog values. We're just going to delete all of these, and now we're going to add all new ones. So um, for these values, for our analog inputs, we're going to use integer values, which are full words um, in the codices world. I'm going to call this AI channel 1, and we'll just add one for each channel. 
so we have the proper uh, input process image size which should total nine bytes we've added our analog input channels now we'll add one more uh, digital input channels this is going to be a um, unsigned integer so it's eight bytes we'll do the same for the output um, so we can control this now we can go to ethernet uh, IP IO mapping and we can tag these to variables in our project. I'm going to create one called my EIP analog in and my EIP output byte. We can now use these in our project so we'll go to PLC PRG. We're going to create a local byte or a, I'm sorry a local word here. We're going to call it local analog val and we're going to uh, map our input analog value to that just to show a value here and we're also going to cycle uh, increment the output byte so that we can see the outputs uh, changing. Now we'll go online and we'll run our project. You can see uh, on the left the uh, Ethernet IP uh, port is very happy and I wrote a sample project that's feeding a 0 to 10 volt into our analog signal so you can see it uh, working and our output bytes are toggling. Thanks for watching.